Well, it is a lovely, lovely evening out here. I'm going to take advantage of this wonderful weather as much as possible. And here we are at the Feast of St. James, the brother of Jesus. It is technically on October 23rd, but that fell on a Sunday this year, and Sundays are reserved for celebration of the Eucharist and um, always seen in the Episcopal Church as a little Easter, a celebration of Jesus' resurrection and our life in Christ. So when saints' days fall on that day, they get moved to the next day. Hey, Judith. So we'll celebrate St. James of Jerusalem, St. James, the brother of Jesus, today. Wait for just a moment, let other folks get logged in, and then we'll get going. Again, I hope you're having a good Monday, ah, that you're able to enjoy some of this fabulous weather. What a gift. I haven't seen colors and weather this nice for, gosh, I don't know how many years. Just wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We are on page 117, Evening Prayer Rite 2. Hey, Bowling Green, good to see you. Page 117. Hey, Rev. The soon-to-be-famous traveling Reverend Deacon Rebecca Sager, sharing the news and then the joy of Camp Hope all over the diocese. It's very exciting. All right, page 117. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And page 118, the Fos Hilaron. Please pray with me. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now, as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Today's psalm is on page 585. We'll be reading Psalm 1 together. I think this was one of the first psalms I had to memorize as a child. I have no idea why, but uh, probably because it's the first psalm. Hey, Mary, good to see you. So page 585, Psalm 1. When you get there, please join me. Page 585, please read with me. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, again, today is the feast day of St. James, the brother of Jesus, or James of Jerusalem, as he is sometimes called, because it was... It is believed that he led the early church in Jerusalem. So our reading for this evening comes from the book of Acts. This is chapter 15, beginning with the 12th verse. This is when uh, the apostle Paul has returned to Jerusalem and is reporting back his work among non-Jewish people. <sighs> oh, Lord, excuse me. Non-Jewish people and bringing the gospel to them. Hey, Rev. So, Acts 15. 
The whole assembly kept silence and listened to Barnabas and Paul as they told of all the signs and wonders that God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, My brothers, listen to me. Simon has related how God first looked favorably on the Gentiles to take from among them a people for his name. This agrees with the words of the prophets as it is written. After this I will return and I will rebuild the dwelling of David which has fallen. From its ruins I will rebuild it and I will set it up so that all other peoples may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles over whom my name has been called. Thus says the Lord who has been making these things known from long ago. Therefore I have reached the decision that we should not trouble these Gentiles who are turning to God, but we should write to them to abstain only from things polluted by idols and from fornication and from whatever has been strangled and from blood. For in every city for generations past, Moses has had those who proclaim him, for he has been read aloud every Sabbath in the synagogues. Here ends the reading. Our canticle this evening is back on page 119. We'll read the Song of Mary. Page 119, when you get there, please join me. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Now I'll read a bit about... James, the brother of Jesus. The Gospel according to Matthew and the Epistle to the Galatians, the James whom we commemorate today is called the Lord's brother. Other writers, following Mark's tradition, believe him to have been a cousin of Jesus. Certain apocryphal writings speak of him as a son of Joseph's first wife. Whatever his relationship to Jesus, brother, half-brother, or cousin, James was converted after the resurrection eventually became bishop or leader of the church in Jerusalem. In the first letter to the Corinthians, Paul says that James was favored with a special of appearance, with a special appearance of the Lord before the ascension. Later, James dealt cordially with Paul at Jerusalem. During the Council of Jerusalem, when there was disagreement about whether Gentile converts should be circumcised, James summed up the momentous decision with these words. My judgment is that we should impose no irksome restrictions on these Gentiles who are turning to God. The church historian Eusebius, writing 300 years afterwards and quoting from an earlier church history, says that James was surnamed the Just. Excuse me, phone call came in there. Eusebius declares that James was surnamed the Just. He was holy. Abstemious did not cut his hair or oil his body and was continually on his knees in prayer, interceding for his people. As many as came to believe did so through James. James's success in converting many to Christ greatly perturbed some groups in Jerusalem. According to early church historians, they begged him to restrain the people, for they have gone astray to Jesus, thinking him to be the Messiah. We bear you witness that you are just Persuade the people that they do not go astray. We put our trust in you. They then set James on the pinnacle of the temple, bidding him to preach to the multitude and turn them from Jesus. James, however, testified for the Lord. Therefore, they hurled him from the roof to the pavement and cudgeled him to death. That's the legend. I have a hard time believing uh, that that's actually what happened. Other historians I was reading today and traditions say that he died during the siege of Jerusalem 
Jerusalem was swept up in the revolt against Rome from 66 to 70, about 30 years after Jesus walked the earth. And some traditions say he was killed in that revolt uh, when the city was stormed by the Romans. I tend to believe that rather than that the Jewish leaders would have shed blood inside the temple grounds. It doesn't make any sense. But regardless, he's held as a martyr one way or another for the faith. All right, page 120, the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we'll pray suffrages A. Please pray with me. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant, O God, that following the example of your servant James the Just, brother of our Lord, your church may give itself continually to prayer and to reconciliation of all who are at variance and enmity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Turning ahead a little bit on page 247 of your prayer book, 247, there are prayers for martyrs. <clears throat> if you'll turn there, we'll pray one of these prayers together. On page 247, we'll pray the prayer that begins, Almighty God, by whose grace and power. Please pray with me. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyr James triumphed over suffering and was faithful even to death, grant us who now remember him in thanksgiving to be so faithful in our witness to you in this world that we may receive with him the crown of life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Excuse me. Lord, I'm having trouble with yawns tonight. And then, if you'll turn to page 814, we'll pray prayer one there together. In honor of this gorgeous, gorgeous autumn weather. Page 814. O oh, Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, Open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that, rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness. For the sake of him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, Bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. 
At this time, I invite your thanksgivings and intercession silently, aloud, or typed in the chat box. We'll finish up on page 126 with the prayer of St. Chrysostom. When you get there, please pray with me. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Dear friends, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, I hope you have a restful, blessed evening. Uh, please remember Charlie in prayers. He goes in for back surgery tomorrow. And keep um, George and Mike in your prayers as they continue to recover from surgery. Blessings, friends.